In this example, I'd like to look at using our strain displacement relations in polar coordinates. So what I want to do is consider a thin band of material, and it has a radius of 500 millimeters, and it has a thickness of half a millimeter, so it's really quite thin. And I want to consider it having a prescribed uh, deformation, which is strictly in the radial direction. So it has no motion no material point moves in the tangential direction, and every material point moves in the radial direction in direct proportion to its angular position. So the, the constant of proportionality will be alpha, which is given as two millimeters. So this is the set that we have here. So it starts out as a sort of semicircle here, or, or quarter circle, and after deformation it will have this configuration here shown by the blue line. And I'd like to answer two questions about this system. One is, what is the strain field in the material? And two, what is the length of the material after deformation? So when it starts, the length is going to be pi r over 2, so pi times 500 divided by 2. And I'd like to know what it is after the deformation. So let's start with the first question, which is, what are the strains? So we can use our strain displacement relations in polar form. So the normal strain in the radial direction is going to be the derivative of ur with respect to r. And ur is, doesn't depend on r, so we get zero normal strain in the radial direction, even though we have motion in the radial direction. The normal strain in the tangential direction is given by this relationship here. And we can plug in for u theta and ur and do the calculation, and we find out that we get alpha theta divided by r. So this little r here is the position of material points inside the band. And the material points vary f from a radius of 500 millimeters to 500 and a half millimeters. So they're not varying very much in the system. So we go, we'll go ahead and approximate this normal strain in, in a tangential direction by alpha theta divided by capital R, which is a constant here. So, so that's a small error. It's about a tenth of a percent that we're making when we make that approximation. Uh, the shear strain in the band, epsilon r theta, so the tensorial shear strain, is given by this complicated looking relationship here. But again, we have expressions for ur and u theta, so we can plug in and perform the calculation, and we get alpha over 2r. Again, this is little r position of material points inside the band. And for the same reasoning as we had with the normal strain in the tangential direction, we'll approximate this by alpha divided by 2 capital R. So we'll take it as a constant. So that gives us our strain uh, inside the band. So there's one normal strain in the tangential direction, and then there's this shear strain alpha over 2r. So now let's go ahead and look at the next question, which is what is the length of the band after we're done? Okay, so, so let's consider the band here, and let's focus in on a small segment of material that is just sitting right here, uh, which has an angular extent of d theta. So d theta we're going to consider to be small. So the length of the, this little segment of material is r d theta. Okay? And let's consider what happens to that. That little band of material has a small amount of shear and it has a normal strain in the tangential direction. So that normal strain in the tangential direction, if I multiply it by the original length, since the original length is going to be something small, that tells me the change in that length. And so that's how we're going to figure out what the length of the new band is. We're going to look at small segments along the arc. We're going to calculate their change in length, and then we're going to add it all up as we go along. So after deformation, the length of this little arc of material is going to be the normal strain, epsilon theta theta, times the original length. So that gives us the change in length. And then we add to it its original length. And so I can rearrange that expression as 1 plus epsilon theta theta times r d theta. And so now when I, and that just gives it to me for one little segment of the arc. And now what I can do is I can add it up over the entire arc from 0 to pi over 2. So if we do that, then we're looking at the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 plus epsilon theta theta, which is r alpha over capital R by my approximation, times r times d theta. And so I can do that calculation is very simple. We're just integrating polynomials here. And the end expression then is this guy here. So 
pi r over 2, that is the original length, we can call that L0, and the change in the length is given by alpha pi squared over 8. And so if, if we evaluate those numbers, then we find the new length of the band to be 788 millimeters. The original length was 785 and, and 0.4. So there's about a, a 2.5 millimeter lengthening of the band when it undergoes this deformation.